Hello everyone, today we are going to have a unique discussion on a very common subject called advertising. In this respect, we are going to learn and we are going to get a clear and concise understanding of the essay, a talk on advertising by a famous essayist named Harman Wok. But even before we try to learn the essayist Harman Wok's opinion about advertising, let us concentrate on what we understand by the term advertising. Advertising is a communication basically to encourage and to persuade public to take or to continue to take some new action. To be precise, to buy or to continue to buy some new product. In our life, day in and day out, we see advertisements. Whether it's a newspaper or a television or a magazine cover, posters, hoardings, all around us we see advertisements and beautiful men and women, glamorous world, shining faces are always luring us towards them, goading us to buy some new product. The whole world of business in today's world or perhaps even the economy of the world is dependent on this world of advertisements. Now let us see what our essayist Harman Wok tells us about advertising. Advertising is a term which is almost part and parcel of our life. As I already told you that day in and day out, almost every moment of our life, we are exposed to some advertisement or the other through the media. Have we ever thought any negative aspects of advertisements? Let us see what essayist Herman Bok tells us about advertising. According to the essayist, advertising is all negative. He tells us through his essay the negative features of advertising. The setup or the background of the essay is when the author was invited to the office of a friend named Marquis. It is an office of an advertiser. When author reaches the office of Marquis, he sees all around him different products like color, posters, modeling, clay, captions that are required for advertising. And he takes this opportunity to lash out to the business of advertising. According to Herman Oak, advertising is nothing but cheating people. The whole business of advertising is thriving on trickery and deception. The author feels that people are very gullible in today's world. The advertisers take advantage of that. They show products which are all glittering outside and eventually they trick the people or trick public to buy those products which is actually of no use to them and often those products would do a lot of harm to them. Herman Wok feels that advertising is nothing but a facade. In today's world, it may be a very flourishing business but actually it is nothing but a nasty business. Herman Wok goes one step further to tell us that advertisers or men involved in this advertising business are all utilitarian people. They utilize everything for their own benefit. And as a result, they are corrupting everything that is sweet and beautiful in our world. Herman Wok tries to convey to us to be careful of this trickery in advertising. The author over here feels that advertising kills everything that is beautiful and sweet in our world. He feels that the advertising business is having an utmost utilitarian approach. They utilize everything that is good in our world just to make some profit. The author is extremely scared that how today's motto is just selling. People can do anything to sell their product. 
whether it is good or bad, whether it is going to benefit the humankind or not is immaterial. People in advertising only concentrates in how to exploit nature, art, language, youth and humankind. Through this essay, Herman Wok really tries to convey his growing concern about the negative effects of advertising and how people, especially the younger generation, day by day increasingly are falling a prey to this advertising. Before we learn the essay in detail, let us have a glimpse at the life of the essayist Herman Wok. Herman Wok was born in New York in 1915. His famous novels are Cain Mutiny and Aurora Dawn. The novel Cain Mutiny went on to win him the Pulitzer Prize. The novelist expressed his own wartime experiences during World War II in this novel. After his famous novel Cain Mutiny, his famous other novels are Marjorie Morningstar, Young Blood Hawk and Don't Stop the Carnival. Another interesting aspect of the author is his novel Slattery's Hurricane was filmed afterwards and became a very good and famous movie. His first non-fiction work is This Is My God where he has explained Orthodox Judaism. In the 1970, Woke published his two most ambitious novels, The Winds of War and War and Remembrance. Much later, these were transformed into very popular television miniseries. In the beginning of the essay, Herman Wok has asked us many questions regarding our basic needs. He says advertising is nothing but an unnecessary creation of want. Let us see what exactly does he mean by that. The essayists over here explains that we human beings have some basic need. We need food, shelter, etc. to survive, to live in this world. Now when we need this, we buy these things, we buy food and the shopkeepers sell us food to earn some money and with that money they again buy their basic need. So that is all about business. But what do we human beings do? We go one step further to buy tobacco, cigarettes, alcohol, whiskey and also there are so many beauty products, cosmetic products, plethora of soap, shampoo etc etc. The essayist tries to make us understand that do we really need these products? Beyond our basic needs, do we really need to buy these things? Now when we are going one step ahead to buy a tobacco or a whiskey or a cigarette or maybe one very expensive cosmetic or a soap, these are our unnatural needs. And these unnatural needs are created by advertising. So that is why the essay is, says that advertising is nothing but trickery and deception because they create this unnatural, unnecessary need and want among human beings for things that we don't really need in our life, for things which may in the long run harm our lives as well. While talking about the evil of advertising, Herman Bok also mentions about the hidden cost. He tells us that when we go to the shop to buy a product, are we aware of the hidden cost that we pay from our own pocket? When we buy a product, we are paying for the product quality, maybe for its packaging, etc. also. But the whole gamut of expenditure that the advertising business spends for one product are actually being included in that product price. And we gullible people are unaware of it. 
So, we pay from our own pocket for this advertising and it is kind of we fall into our own trap because we encourage the world of advertising to make us more and more gullible in convincing us about the goodness or the quality of that product which might not be true at all. Another aspect of this evil of advertising is how the whole world of advertising is misleading us. The advertising world with all their glamour, with all their shine, with all their shimmer are trying to goad us day in and day out every minute of the day and bit by bit with their false claim, with their false images, they are hypnotizing us. So it is basically affecting the young people in a negative way. When they are watching an advertisement on television about a cigarette or a whiskey or some cosmetic product, what are they watching? They are watching people happy, having a good life, always smiling, looking beautiful. But is it the reality? Are the advertising depicting the real world to us? They are showing how people together are happy partying and having whiskey or having cigarettes. Are they showing us the after effects? What would happen to that human being who would get addicted to those products or buy them? Another very crucial concern of Harman Oak is the decay of language. He feels the advertisers destroy the dignity of language time and again by deviating from the standard norms, the standard ethics or grammar of language. As for example, he talks about how advertisers use redundancy of language. Before I tell you about the examples Herman Vogt has used in his essay, let me explain what redundancy in language is. The very word redundancy talks about repetition of two words, that is two words used side by side of almost same and similar meaning. When one word is conveying the meaning, what is the need of using another word beside it? Say for example, if I tell you, I have returned back from my village, the very phrase quote unquote return back, what does it convey? The very word return talks about coming back. So we do not use the word back after return. So this aspect of using similar words again and again is called redundancy. The same redundancy is used by advertisers often without caring at all about the standard of language. And Harman Vogt is really upset about it. He feels language is like our Promethean fire. Have you heard the story of Promethean? Promethean is the person who has stolen fire from heaven to give it to mankind for the very first time so that they can use it. Since then non Promethean fire is used as knowledge. Harman Vogt feels language is our Promethean fire. It is our knowledge. So it is language which makes the humankind better and above the rest of the animal world. And then how casual could we become to use that language in such a casual and demeaning manner? Harman Vogt says the advertisers call a product as Aurora Dawn. He explains that the word Aurora means early dawn and the word dawn means exactly the same. So it is a redundant use and it is destroying the dignity of the language. He rebukes the advertisers for being so casual and callous in using language. The essayist gives us another example where a shampoo is called double bubble. 
Shakespeare in his novel has for the first time used this phrase double bubble. Herman Wok feels very upset that how Shakespearean phrase could be used for a trivial product like a shampoo. So basically the author, the essayist over here explains his concern about the increasing decay of language and art and he explains his concern that how the advertisers are casually and callously destroying the dignity of language and art. At the same time, Herman Wok also expresses his anger towards public, towards the human lot, towards us. He says that we can't take everything because of our habit. We are not aware that something so heinous and serious is being done to us. We are not bothered that our language is being destroyed like this. Because of our habit, we accept everything. And Herman Wok feels that that, is, that itself is a very negative approach and advertising world is highly responsible for this. The next concern of the essayist is exploitation of nature. The essayist feels that advertising is gradually killing and destroying the beauty of nature. He feels God has given us this land. God has given us earth with all its beautiful mountains, sea, river and the greenery. And the advertising business is killing and exploiting the beauty day by day. When you look around yourself, you see your city and the town filled with different kinds of posters and hoardings and pictures always selling a product. Even a real estate businessman calls you to come and buy his land. The businessmen feel that they own the land. In the process, in the bargain, they forget that land is actually not ours. It is given to us by God. So we do not have any right to exploit and destroy nature. The essayist talks about a serious problem that we face in today's world. And he calls it a dismal pilgrimage. He is actually concerned about the negative effect advertising is having on today's youth. How young people like a pilgrimage following the city and the shine and glamour of this advertising world. They do not understand that all these glamour and shimmer of the advertising world is actually fake and false. Even beautiful girls who want to be into modeling or want to take part into the fashion world are guided by all those posters and beautiful faces of a magazine. But they do not know the other side of the world. They do not know how hard and how cruel the business is. So when they come to take part into fashion or modeling, they are least prepared about the dangers of this world. And who is responsible for this? Advertising. The essayist feels advertising is often unethical. Day by day, it is misguiding and destroying the young people by luring them towards a world which is hardly the reality. In the end of the essay, the essayist Herman Wok, in a sarcastic vein says how good old American slang of the word sell means fraud. And he says that this connotation of the word sell is exactly justified for advertising. Because for advertising, the benefit of the humankind is not the concern. But to sell product by hook or crook in terms of earning some profit is their goal or their motto. So fraud is the exact connotation for the advertising. The essayist concludes by saying that 
and he apologizes for assaulting advertising. Yet at the same breath, he says that by reading his essay, if at least two people stop the advertising job and goes into some other decent job, he would find himself successful. to convey through his essay a talk on advertising. He wanted us to realize the negative effects of advertising. Haven't we learned a new side of the advertising business? Aren't we now aware of the fact that how slowly like a slow poisoning the advertising world is bringing up a false image in front of our eyes and children, young people, sometimes even much matured elders are falling a prey to this. But everything in this world has another side of the coin. Don't you agree with me? The whole world of business today is based on advertising. The economy of the world is thriving on advertising. It's a huge business. There are several educational institutions and courses, academic courses, which are teaching how to be creative through advertising. So can we really do without advertising in today's world? Why don't we have a good debate on it? Because essayist Herman Vogt has now really made us thoughtful. It is not as easy as it looks like. Why don't we try to realize the negative aspects of advertising and try to avoid that or at least turn the negative aspects into positivity? Advertisements can be used for the betterment of human beings as well. We have positive advertisements for social reformations. There are issues like AIDS, killing of girl child, the hazards of smoking, the hazards of alcohol on us. We can have a propaganda through ad advertisements so that our society get rid of all these hazards that are increasing in today's world. So in the end, I can only say that advertising has a positive as well as a negative side. Our wisdom, our knowledge tells us to be aware of the negative sides and be careful enough to avoid that. We should make sure that our children or the young people, younger generation should not be gullible and believe in the false promises, but rather use advertising as a positive means for our social reformation. <music>